I agree, definitely. Uh, yeah, your concentration you know, goes down when your concentration yeah. 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 So you know, but anyway, it's a question of somehow there needs to be a balance, I agree, but at the end of the day, we've got to avoid the irrational stupid extremes. Okay? At three o'clock in the morning driving at thirty in the twenty zone in front of the school. Sorry, what really is wrong with that? Uh, but yeah, okay, um, yeah. I was just going to give an example of myself when I was stopped. Yeah. Um, I just simply asked the, the police officer. Uh, I was stopped for speeding, and I just said, "Who put that speed limit there?" Yeah. And um, he said, "Well, it's there for your safety." And I said, "So, if it was midnight, uh, hell storming, um, foggy, could I still do that speed limit?" <laughs> no, then they expect you to act rationally. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, 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 so I said, did you ask me to, you know, for yeah. my consent that yeah. that's an acceptable speed limit? Yeah. And they couldn't answer. They wouldn't answer. They wouldn't answer. Yeah. And uh, they were adamant that there was going to be a summons through the post. Yeah. Never heard anything. Yeah. But now we're, that we've got the Sentencing Act 2020, you know, it has to be related back to reason. And as we'll see, this, there has to be a good reason before any legislation is created. They need to consider all reasonable options to meet that legitimate aim. And they must choose the one which is most proportionate, and most proportionate is the one that least affects an individual's rights. That's the test, or the test that should be carried out before any legislation is enacted. And that's what we need to it should be, but it should be. <laughs> it will be shortly, and you'll understand actually why it is and why it doesn't happen when there's no enforcement. Okay, so that sort of covered quite a lot already. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, I don't like this format. I can't really see it. Okay. Uh, just very quickly, the natural law. People talk about natural law. What is natural law? Essentially, uh, natural law is the level above us, man-made law. Okay? It's something which gives a consistent result based upon a cause, okay? i.e. cause and reaction. So gravity. So, so gravity, uh, basically, okay, Gravity, if I let go, we all know. Sorry, what page is that on, please? Oh, sorry. Page nine. Yeah. Okay. So, basically, Roman said, those who stand on their rights harm no one. Those who don't, uh, have none. So, quite simply, I have the choice. If this is a good word of glass, I'm not going to do the glass. Okay. I can stand on my rights and stop that happening. So that's how natural law works. Somebody has a believed right because they feel that they have a right, their social condition belief system, okay, so parliament thinks it can tell people what to do. And if nobody stands up, they just carry on doing it. Okay? And today they'll do this much, tomorrow that much, that much, that much, keep pushing it. But once you start to stand, you stop it, okay? And you'll see, because we're all equal kings and queens, that nobody has the right to knowingly cause harm, and we have an obligation to stop others causing harm. Therefore, we've got to stop turning a blind eye. When we see a wrong, we need to stand up, not only for ourselves, but for others. But we actually have an obligation to do that, okay? Because we have an obligation to keep the peace. That means, we do not cause a wrong, and we stop others causing a wrong when we see it. So, uh, natural law basically follow, if you don't stand on your rights, you have none, and if you do stand on your rights, you harm none. So again, a fundamental concept to it. Uh, we've already said that really it's all about equity. Let me try and um, It's all about equity. Um, now, people talk about uh, divine law, law of creation, uh, many terms we use for this. Uh, 
Um, God's law. No. Uh, cosmic law. Whatever. Okay. What is the substance of it? As opposed to the form, what name we use. Again, equity. The substance is an acceptance of a power greater than self. Okay. So we don't need to argue whether it's natural law or God's law or you know Islamic law or this law or that law. The substance it's greater than us. We cannot control it. Okay. So whatever word we use for it doesn't matter. What's important is that it's our connection with that is through what we feel. And that there is equity. Or called the rules of it's the rules of equity. It's not equity law. Because these things are rules and it depends on how we implement it. And I've been looking at the definition of law, or how would I describe the word law? Law to me is the creation of duties, rights, and obligations. Okay. And and uh, as you'll see, the councils have been brilliant. They put me onto the Act of Settlement 1700. And in Section 4 of the Act of Settlement 1700, we have a legal definition, i.e., Parliament assembled have defined law, the word, as your birthright. <coughs> so we've got finally a definition of law, which has been around for 350 years or whatever. Okay? So, like I say, Again, if you look at birthright, they've accepted its rights. I.e., law is about duties, rights, and obligations. And when you go to court, the first thing that the court should establish is what are the duties, rights, and obligations between the disputing children? Again, it's a bunch of kids that uh, are <laughs> fighting, they can't sort it in private. So they've come for public dispute resolution. So what should happen when you go into court, it's called the cause of action. Have you got a good reason to be here? So the first thing they should look at is duties, rights and obligations between the parties. And, and guess what they don't do? In the magistrate's courts, they presume legislation is law. And under section 101 of the magistrate's court, you've got to go against the fundamental principles of innocent against innocent until proven guilty. You need to prove that the legislation doesn't apply to you. Okay? you how can you prove a negative? Impossible. Okay? Of course they're going to beat us every time. Okay? It doesn't matter if you use trust arguments or legalese arguments or whatever <coughs> arguments. Okay? You can't prove a negative. So forget it. That's a waste of time. We've got to find a different way of moving this thing forward. Um, so, man-made law is anything that we do. Therefore, my word is my bond. Sorry, hmm? that last bit, could you explain this again? You can't prove a negative. You can't prove something and doesn't what's exist. what's the negative? Okay, what they say in the magistrate's court in section 101, legislation is law. You're, you're bound to it. Okay? Unless you can prove you're not. And you can't prove you're not. Okay? But it goes against the fundamental tenet everybody's innocent until proven guilty. And it goes against the independent judiciary, the separation of powers. If they want you to prove that you're not bound to legislation, they've admitted they're an administrative court to implement the will of parliament. This is not a court of law. Okay. So, these are the things that we're now starting to throw at them. Yeah? Um, there's lots of folk around doing um, status correction. Who and what? There's, you know, um, there's lots of documents around, like an affidavit oh, yeah, status yeah, yeah. correction. Would that be a way, in your right. opinion, of okay. proving that you, you're You'll not... see, okay, the only status correction you can do is you yourself, okay? Why? You need equal king and queen. So to whom have you got to go and beg to have your status corrected? <laughs> Simple. Why do I need to be subject to 13 barons? <laughs> okay. Well, why must I be subject to the queen? Unless I so choose to do. 
It's just like, from what my comprehension of it is, then you can use those documents as evidence that you're not then bound by these legislations and rulings. Uh, yeah. Well, we're finding ways now of doing it. So last week at Morden, we gave judicial notice and gave them the Bill of Rights and the Act of Settlement and the Coronation Oath Act. Uh, but still, they obviously ruled against us. But you could see that it's getting into their heads now. Okay. Um, so we've got to find more effective ways of doing it. Yeah. I've got, uh, I signed my birth register and my fictitious name with the common law court and I've got an ID card to say that I'm, I yeah. take ownership. Of so ask them how to get it enforced. I have no idea how they plan so, to get it enforced. Right, okay. so, uh, That's so the problem with it. Yeah. All you're doing is you're moving from uh -huh. one God that yeah. you're bowing down to, <laughs> to another God and, and you know, another master. Yet you're an equal king and queen. <coughs> yeah, but can't they bind you into it with your birth certificate? No. From your birth certificate. But well, they can't. Why? How, how is it possible? Because okay. don't they uh, have Without to your consent, your nothing name. can be done. They be they can, the only thing they've got is the illusion backed up by threats of violence and actual violence. That's it. It's mafia. Nothing else. So like, um, I don't know if you know Katie Hopkins, she was, uh, she was arrested and sent to prison for seven days, I think it was last year, for offending somebody. Yeah. So just because like she offended somebody, yeah. she was arrested for that and yeah. in prison for it. Yeah. She had nothing to stand on, no way of uh, yeah. stating. You know, Julian Assange, yeah. all the COVID yeah. fines, all the speeding fines, all of it's the same. You know, basically they'll pick an example and they'll just ramroad it through. Why? Uh, the council tax, they know that they've beaten in, in, intellectually and that they know they've got no argument. However, they are mixing in the courts political decisions as to how society chooses to organize itself with the law. The two are separate and independent. Okay, but in the back of their minds, it's like, oh shit, I pay pounds for that, council tax. Okay, why, you know, why shouldn't you? As opposed to questioning, why am I paying council tax? Is it right? Okay. If they if they are the people that are giving the law out or the chief, uh, judge decisions, yeah. then they're the people in charge of it, aren't they? We can't, what, what can we do? Uh, well, you'll that? see how we're starting to explore to get around it. Okay. Um, just, uh, but we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Okay, so um, man-made law is basically any positive law which is created. My word is my bond. Okay. Uh, so we bind ourselves through our words and our words might not necessarily be well expressed and we may reconsider them and finalize it in writing. Okay? Therefore, uh, it's the written version which will be relied upon uh, because that there shows it's not just a straight off the top of my head. It's thought about and written and therefore I may have changed my mind of what I said first into what I've expressed in writing. Hence, freedom of speech, and you can't hold MPs uh, discussions uh, against them. But equally, freedom of speech applies to us all, and you'll see why when we talk about the Bill of Rights. Okay, are you okay with what common law precedence is? Okay, it's case law set where there's a rule or a principle of law, which generally is equitable. And where does case law get set? Uh, in the courts. Which courts? Uh, uh, any court. So can you magistrates? Uh, well, okay. The problem with magistrates' courts is they're not courts of record. That's why I was asking. Okay. And we'll talk a lot about the magistrates' courts tomorrow. <coughs> um, but basically, uh, I, I'm a... I'm totally in favour of written, ju written judge decisions, okay? Because you've got a rule book, you can see if they followed the rules or haven't, and you can apply rationality, because anything that is irrational is unlawful. 
uh, it's uh, the, the system really is beautiful. And simple. So are, ju are magistrates judges? And, uh, magistrates or lay people, however, they still are accountable for their decisions. Mm -hmm. And now we're learning how to... So we shouldn't them. be calling them judges then? No, they're not judges. Okay. You, you will sometimes get deputy district judges or district judges in a magistrate's court. Okay. Um, so it's only agreements which can have, when you, you have to have a meeting of the minds and consent to the respective duties, rights and obligations for a lawful buying or bondage or whatever you want to call it. Okay? So uh, without that, there cannot be a lawful interaction. And, and it's your free will. Uh, and free will means no mental coercion. What is mental coercion? Fraud. So they recognize <coughs> mental coercion in the Fraud Act. The Fraud Act only gives a certain number of uh, types of fraud, <coughs> as does the Equality Act only gives a certain number of protected characteristics. Both of them, however, are partially codified common law. Okay, common law fraud covers every crime against the mind. Common law equality and fairness covers everything against fairness and equality. May I ask what you're quoting now? Is this actually in the manual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, I, I'm just going in all different ways of that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Liz. Okay. okay. So, this is one of the major problems we have, because nobody knows what is advice and regulation and what actually is the law. Go on, you know, government.uk website, okay, uh, uh, legislation.gov.uk, it's all legislation. A lot of that legislation is based upon the common law, okay, uh, and a lot of the common law is equitable. However, nobody knows what part is common law and what part is legislation, i.e. advice or uh, uh, um, uh, is not law, sorry, advice and whatever else they are. And so we, we've got this whole mishmash where really nobody knows what is what. In legislation itself, They'll say, enacted or the common law, or enacted or the law, okay? So, uh, the Coronation Oath Act says, statutes in Parliament agreed on, the word and, the law, i.e., those two are different. It's not the same. And then it says, and, customs. So, there's three things which bind the power to create legislation. But to them, they just they have no idea what's what. And that's, that's why I keep saying it's absolute ignorance. And we've got to simplify this whole thing. So man-made law is just an absolute flipping mess because nobody really knows what the hell is going on. But a lot of it is equitable. Uh, and the more that I've been looking at it, the Sentencing Act 2020 <coughs> proves recent conscious expression of equity. No victim, no harm, no crime, no fine. That's what it's saying. That's very equitable, which 99% of people already live by. Um, so, everything comes back to a breach of peace. How do we know this? Uh, under the uh, observation and that, uh, we look at evidence. In ration, rationally once we're beyond survival. So, until somebody can say that you can tell me what to do, or I can tell you what to do, i.e. bring the Creator under the Court's own rules of evidence to provide first-hand witness testimony which I can cross-examine, that any individual or group of individuals can tell any individual or groups of individuals what to do, it's self-evident we're all equal under the law. Nobody's above the law. We're all entitled to an equal share of the Creator's 
uh, seasonal fruits, and we're all equal beneficiaries of the Creator's creations. <coughs> okay? And because we know we have kids, we are trustees, i.e., we have an obligation to creation to look after the Creator's creations for future generations. Okay? So we have multiple roles here. But if you take that basis, until somebody can prove that wrong, okay, that's how simple uh, it is. So what that means is nobody can prove the right to knowingly cause another harm. Therefore, if we can't knowingly cause another harm, we must keep the peace. And that's the foundation, the substance of where breach of peace comes from. So the Justice of Peace Act 1361 is still current statute law. It's recognized on the statute books today. Okay? So Justice of the Peace Act. 1361. Okay, and that's the foundation of it. What that says is everybody, not just the king or queen, is entitled to the peace. And when you pull that one on the police, they just simply turn around and say, Oh, you're one of those freemen of the land or common law. Mm. No. <coughs> You're own legislation, my friend. Okay? Justice of the Peace Act 1361. Their reaction is, Ah, the King's Peace or the Queen's Peace. No, my friend. Everybody's peace. We have an individual obligation to one another. Okay? That's not only for some... But this is how we're starting to present the arguments now, that we're pulling it together. So everything comes back to a breach of peace because it's self-evident we're all entitled to uh, the peace. Why? Because nobody can prove that they're above the law. Nobody can prove they have the right to impose their will on another. That then means nobody has the right to knowingly cause another harm. Shit happens, accidents happen, that's fine. But basically, when accidents happen, you hold your hands up and you say sorry. So... There must be exceptions, right? Because we do accept that if, if someone murders someone else, then we have the right to lock them up. No, yeah, but we have the difference between... Okay, the fact is somebody has killed somebody. That's yeah, yeah. the substance. Yeah. Okay, so that's what they call uh, actus reus. Yeah. The court looks at two things, the facts and the state of mind. So if I did something out of self-defense, or, uh, you know, I, I wasn't negligent, but I didn't have that knowledge, okay, I have an innocent mind. And even though I've caused harm, it was not with intent. Okay? Therefore, I'm not guilty of a crime an accident or a mistake. However, if I was with knowledge, hence the difference between murder and manslaughter. Okay? So, again, this is equity in operation. Equity is about substance, not form. Yes, somebody was killed. Okay? But the question is, did you intend to inflict harm, or was it accidental harm, or was it self-defense? That the inequity then gives you lawful excuse from the existing common law precedents. Okay? And you'll see this everywhere, this concept of equity. Because at the council tax, what reasonable excuse have you got for not paying? What they're saying is, what lawful excuse have you got for not paying? Well, they're not proving my obligation. What's unreasonable about that? Okay? They made the claim they must prove it. I don't have to disprove. Okay. And so the courts look at the state of the mind, which is mens rea, and actus reus, which is the action, the form. Okay. Sorry, so Mark, can mm -hmm. I just ask another thing? On the, on the council tax, yeah. my head's going, well, hang on a minute, have we actually signed out of consent the contractual law? There, there is no contract. There, there is no contract. The, count, the councils openly now admit there so is no consent. Surely, if there's no contract, 
higher than what you just said there, no? Uh, yeah, so there is no contract. So the, the council tax is simple. Okay, there is no contract. The councils now openly admit there is no contract. Okay. We were saying there is no consent. The councils now openly admit you don't need consent. You're just obliged. <laughs> is, is there not a contract because your bins are getting collected every week? And no, the electricity it's a nice the gift of them. Is. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> ask for it. So how can an obligation be higher than a contract? Because it's no, the, the, the contract, the agreement creates the obligation. Okay? And guess what the Bill of Rights is? A contract. Why is the Bill of Rights a contract? Because the, the uh, again, we'll just talk about the Bill of Rights, it's fine. Um, the first sentence of the Bill of Rights says, the people living at the time who created the Bill of Rights claim to be representing the people. Okay, so the first thing that they've done there is admitted, we the principal and they the agent, we the master, they the slave, or whatever you want to call it politically correct and call it principal agent. We the people have delegated authority to our representatives to represent our interests. With that then they listed all the grievances against the previous king. And what they did was they then offered to William and Mary a contract on certain terms and conditions. Rights, duties, obligations. And those were that they can't do anything to the prejudice of the people. Perfectly equitable. You can't do anything to harm me. Uh, that the government is subject of acts of, part of Parliament. Because the king was tyrannical, now Parliament was thought they will control the tyranny of the king. And then it lists all the rights in that. And when it was accepted by William and Mary, and you'll see it there, you know, the offers made and upon acceptance and the terms, it lists it all out. It's very clear. Uh, and upon acceptance, it was declared, it was accepted on the terms, not only in this, the rights of subjects, but of the people. Okay? So it's very clear. It's a contract. And that there restricts in theory, what they can do. It's the constituting authority. It's a bill. It's called a Bill of Rights for a reason and not an act of rights. Okay? The reason is it's the constituting authority of those governments. So it's a contract. So how on earth can they come with a rationale and say, hey, listen, you know, you read the title page of an act of parliament that says, by and, by her wonder, enacted by her wonderful majesty, or now his majesty, uh, by and with the advice and consent of the Lord Spiritual, Lord's Temple, and the Commons, in this Parliament assembled by authority of the same. We can do this here. Yeah. We can create our own authority. That's what they do. Okay? So it still does not show the connection between where's my obligation? What right have you got to make me your slave? Which, guess what? is in breach of the Slave Act 2015. <laughs> it is, because the Slave Act 2015 very clearly says nobody can be forced or coerced and get benefit from it. That's the definition of slavery. Okay? So, uh, you know, but it's about getting these things enforced and that is what we need to learn. Don't forget, they've been playing the game for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the first time, I believe, that we actually are making progress and in inroads uh, by applying rationality and common sense, which actually is reflected in their rules on them. All we're doing is putting up the mirror. Mm -hmm. okay, this is what you're doing. Okay, fine, I'll give this back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, can you just explain the difference between an act and a bill? Okay, There's private uh, members' okay. bills as well. A bill is a claim. If you look up the etymology of the word bill, it means a claim. So, you, you're having work done on your house, the guy sends you a bill. You then check the bill and you dispute it and say, oh, hang on, you haven't done this, or, oh no, you've only done half of that. Okay? So, what you're doing then is you're negotiating the bill. Until you've got a settlement, then I'm in agreement as to what the correct bill is, 
and then you pay the bill. Okay? So a bill is a claim. What happens is anybody puts a bill into Parliament and basically it goes from the Lords to the Commons to the Lords to the Commons to the Lords to the Commons. Okay? And that there is deemed the meeting of the minds. So for some reason they believe that they can impose their will on the people. And they play their own little game. And traditionally though, I think what it is, is because the House of Lords used to be the highest court, they of the belief that because it goes commons, holds, commons, lords, we've got advice and consent, therefore House of Lords is the highest court in the land, therefore it is law. I think that's the rational reason why they believe legislation is law. However, since the courts were uh, in the Constitutional Reform Act 2003 or 2005, I'm not sure what it was, it separated the courts, the Supreme Court, from the uh, creation of legislation. So there can be no doubt of the independence since then. Okay. However, it even goes back to more fundamental principles. My word is my bond. And I think this is where we're going to start to concentrate our message. Your oath, affirmation or attestation is your contract with the people. Okay? Your legislation is how the details of how you're going to uphold your oath, affirmations or attestations. So the monarch's oath is, she's made various three. Okay? When you get coronated or go through coronation, whatever the correct word is, okay? First one is, the Archbishop, an unchallenged claim, for some reason, believes he's God's representative on earth, and has the right to offer a contract to the monarch. Do you promise to govern the peoples of blah de blah de blah according to their respective laws and customs? Okay? That's the contract to govern. The way that that is implemented is through the Bill of Rights, which says Parliament assembled has legislative authority and it dictates to Her Majesty's government, who has executive authority, uh, to go and do what Parliament wants them to do. So that's governance. So Parliament is supreme over Her Majesty's government or His Majesty's government. Okay? But that's all it is. Because the Bill of Rights in its first sentence says, we the people are supreme over all of this nonsense. Okay? So it's very clear the chain of authority. The second promise then is, the, uh, will you use uh, mercy and justice in, or cause law in all mercy and justice or whatever it is. It's a second promise. Okay? It's separate. And Okay? So that there creates the independent judiciary. And then the third promise just gives uh, the Church of England you know, freedom to do whatever it's done traditionally of which the Queen or the monarchs, the head of the state of anyone. So these are three different promises. So to govern, in order to govern, the office of, before you can take up your seat in Parliament, you need to swear an oath of allegiance. I promise to bear true allegiance to the monarch to do her job. That then binds you to the law, the people's respective laws and customs. Then the ministers, when they take office, they make an oath of office to act according to law. Okay? So, that law, what is that law? <coughs> that was legislatively affirmed, like I say, in the Act of Settlement as your birthright, hence why they govern us according to our respective laws. <coughs> okay? In the Coronation Oath Act, there's, with Old English, there may, there's a risk of interpretation. Okay? Because what the Coronation Oath Act actually says is, 